Recall the notion of congruence modulo n. Let n be a positive integer, then two integers a and b are said to be congruent mod n, and we write that as a with this funny little symbol here to mean a is congruent to b mod n if n divides a minus b. So for example, if n equals five, then we have the equivalence class of zero here, which consists of all the multiples of five, and we call that five z. And then we have one, or the equivalence class of one, which has uh, negative four, one, six, and so on, and we call that one plus five z. And then we have one for two, which we call two plus five z, and we have one for three, which we call three plus five z, and there's one for four, which we call four plus five z. So now I want to uh, look at something a little bit different. We've looked at congruence uh, before. Now I want to look at doing arithmetic with these equivalence classes. So for example, suppose I have the equivalence class of one plus the equivalence class of two. What could that possibly mean? Well, just knowing what we know about addition, it would be nice if that were equal to the equivalence class of three, but I'm not sure it is. So let me put a little question mark here. Let's see if we can try and figure out what this would be. So in order to interpret this statement, uh, I'm gonna take a representative from the equivalence class of one. I can pick anything I want here, uh, but in this case, I'll pick six. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, equivalence class of two. I'll pick a representative. How about I'll pick seven? And I wanna know, does this equal, if I do six plus seven here, does this equal three? Well, six plus seven we know is 13, and 13 does equal three if we consider that we are talking about modulo five. So a better way to write this might be to write six mod five plus seven mod five is equal to three mod five. So that was addition, and what about multiplication. So how about if I were gonna do two times three? And I wanna know, does that equal six? And six mod five we know is equal to one. So again, I'm gonna check this and see if this works. So two times three, where I pick a representative from two and a representative from three. So this time I'm gonna pick seven and eight. And I wanna know if seven times eight is equal to six, which I know is equal to one mod five. Well, seven times eight is 56, and 56 mod five does indeed equal six, which we know is equal to one. And so a better way to think of this might be to say that seven mod five times eight mod five is equal to one mod five. So let's look at addition in a little more detail. Well, I have the equivalence class of one plus the equivalence class of two equaling the equivalence class of three. And I saw that when I chose six, that was uh, six was congruent to one mod five, and I chose seven, which is congruent to two mod five. And then notice that six plus seven was congruent to one plus two mod five, but one plus two is three, so six plus seven is congruent to three mod five. If I want to generalize this, I can say that a1 being congruent to a2 mod n and b1 being congruent to b2 mod n, when I add a1 and b1, that should be congruent to a2 plus b2 mod n. And I want to try and prove this. So let's look at an outline of the proof. So the first thing I notice is I have a1 is congruent to a2 mod n. I can use the definition of congruence to rewrite this as n being uh, or dividing a1 minus a2. And then the next thing I have, I can do a similar thing with the b1 and the b2. Uh, b1 is congruent to b2 mod n. That means that n divides b1 minus b2. And now let's look at what I need to show. And maybe that way I can kind of find a link between these two things here. So I need to show, in this case, that I have uh, a1 plus b1, and that's congruent to a2 plus b2 mod n. That's what I want to show. Well, I can rewrite this as n dividing a1 plus b1 minus a2 plus b2, 
All right. Now what? Well, well maybe uh, since I have an A1 minus A2 and a B1 minus B2, it might be a good idea to rewrite this uh, using those things here. And it's pretty easy to do if I just kind of rearrange the terms. I have an A1 here and an A2 here, and there's a minus sign, so I can make this A1 minus A2 and plus uh, B1 minus B2. Now if N divides A1 minus A2 and N divides B1 minus B2, then isn't it true that N divides the sum of these two things? Well, if that's true, then I have shown what I wanted to show. So let's do a formal proof now. So here's the statement I'm trying to prove. Let n be a positive integer if a1 is congruent to a2 mod n and b1 is congruent to b2 mod n, then a1 plus b1 is congruent to a2 plus b2 mod n. So here's my proof. If a1 is congruent to a2 mod n, then I know that n divides a1 minus a2. And similarly, if b1 is congruent to b2 mod n, then n divides b1 minus b2. But if n divides a1 minus a2 and n divides b1 minus b2, then n must divide the sum of those two things. But uh, when I have n dividing a1 minus a2 plus b1 minus b2, that's the same thing as n dividing a1 plus b1 minus a2 plus b2. Therefore, a1 plus b1 is congruent to a2 plus b2 mod n by the definition of congruence mod n. So we tackled addition, now let's look at multiplication. So I use the example of two times three being equal to one when we're talking about equivalence classes. And I chose seven, and seven's congruent to two mod five, and I chose eight, which is congruent to three mod five. And so I noticed that seven times eight is congruent to two times three mod five, or seven times eight is congruent to six mod five, but six mod five is one, so seven times eight was congruent to one mod five. To generalize this, I can note that if a1 is congruent to a2 mod n, and if b1 is congruent to b2 mod n, then a1 times b1 is congruent to a2 times b2 mod n. So let's look at an outline of a proof for this. And this is gonna be a little bit trickier than the case for addition, but not that much trickier. So I'm gonna start out the same way. If I know that a1 is congruent to a2 mod n, then I can rewrite this as n dividing a1 minus a2. And similarly with the b's, if I have b1 is congruent to b2 mod n, then I can rewrite this as n dividing b1 minus b2. And then what do I need to show? So again, I'm gonna try and work from both directions here and maybe I can find a, a link in the middle about uh, some way to, to connect the two things. And I wanna show that a1 b1 is congruent to a2 b2 mod n. And let's see, let's rewrite this as n dividing a1 b1 minus a2 b2. And now I want to try and rewrite this expression in terms of the uh, a1 minus a2 and b1 minus b2. And here it gets a little bit tricky. There's no obvious way to do it. But I do see I have an a1 times a b1 here, and I just have an a1 here. But isn't it true that if n divides a1 minus a2, that n also divides a1 minus a2 times b1? And I have an a2 times a b2, I just have a b2 over here. Well, if n divides b1 minus b2, isn't it true that n also divides a2 times b1 minus b2? So if that's true, then I notice something nice here. The a2 b1 term here, which has a minus sign, will cancel with the a2 b1 here, which has a plus sign, if I add these together. And then I'll be left with the expression that I want right here. So I think it's time for a formal proof. So here's the expression I want to prove. Let n be a positive integer, and if a1 is congruent to a2 mod n, and b1 is congruent to b2 mod n, then a1 times b1 is congruent to a2 times b2 mod n. And here's my proof. 
So it's going to start out the same way as the proof or the addition here. If a1 is congruent to a2 mod n, then n divides a1 minus a2. And similarly, if b1 divides, or I'm sorry, b1 is congruent to b2 mod n, then n divides b1 minus b2. And if n divides a1 minus a2 and n divides b1 minus b2, then, and here's where I have the little trick that I was using here, n must divide a1 minus a2 times b2 plus a1 times b1 minus b2. But I can rewrite a1 minus a2 times b2 plus a1 times b1 minus b2 as a1 times b1 minus a2 times b2 because I notice that my cross terms here, my a1, b2 terms end up canceling. Thus, a1 times b1 is congruent to a2 times b2 mod n. All right, so I uh, notice that if I look at the equivalence classes here, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, a congruence mod 5, and uh, I put them together in a set here. I'm going to call that set z sub 5 that I have an addition operation that looks like uh, a plus b like you normally would think with equivalence classes and I have a multiplication operation that I can sort of define uh, a new system here where I have a set that consists of equivalence classes and I have these operations. And you'll see that sometimes people write this without brackets. They'll put z5 equal to just 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 because it can get a little cumbersome writing the brackets around the numbers all the time as long as it's understood that we're talking about equivalence classes here. And we can look at a table here for addition modulo 5 that would look something like this where if we look at, for instance, 2 and 1, so 2 plus 1 is 3, or we can do 3 plus 4 is 2 mod 5. And we also have multiplication mod 5, which looks like this. So we could say, for instance, that 2 times 1 is 2 mod 5, or 4 times 2 is 3 mod 5, something like that. So uh, we've taken this idea here and sort of given it some structure. Let's make it official. Let n be a positive integer, then the integers mod n consist of the set z sub n, which is going to equal the equivalence classes of 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 1, together with the operations of addition and multiplication mod n that I showed in the two proofs earlier in the video.